Welcome back to the channel. I'm Tony the Technician. Today we're going to be going back into the third gen Camaro. Today we're going to be doing some diff fluid. So right now we're in the process of wrapping the car. I have the door panels apart. This video is probably already posted. Uh, when I took the doors apart to remove the mirrors and door handles, all of that, I decided I'm doing all new door handles, interior and exterior. Uh, also new door panels, new trim pieces, new crank, new basically everything on the doors is being replaced while we're at it so the car's getting wrapped right now but i am just over 500 miles which if you guys follow the channel you guys might know that i have the hawks 8.8 .8 rear end and after 500 miles it recommends a gear oil change so we're going to be doing that with some adw 90 lucas this is what was originally installed and it takes two and a half quarts it's a true track 373 gears and uh, so i'm just going to show you how to drain it with the the diff cover that i have from hawks and then I just picked up a fluid pump from AutoZone for like 12 bucks or something like that. And so we're going to be using that to get the new fluid in. We'll, check, we'll take a look at what the old fluid looks like. I'll show you guys the rear end and everything while we're down there before we empty it. But lots of little things here and there. Maintenance I'm going through and I'm cleaning up underneath the car because it is, I, I think it's my exhaust. I don't know. <laughs> but this car gets absolutely filthy not even driving on country roads just the amount of dirt that the exhaust blows around it is filthy under the car so every few drives that i take it on i wipe down the underside but it was bad this time i'm also going through and cleaning up the engine bay because it is also filthy also i also found some loose bolts on the pulley setup over by the power steering pump so i had to tighten those one of them was completely backed out and just sitting on top of the Pulley, so I put some Loctite on those. Uh, two others were loose, one completely out. So just maintenance, I'm going through everything now, checking hoses, wires, nuts, bolts, and uh, we already did an oil change on it, which looked pretty decent. A uh, little bit of metal material in there, but that's expected with a new engine. So let's go ahead and get into this. Here's the new gear oil. This is the half quart, two foals, and uh, the pump. Let's get to the rear end. Flashlight. So here's the Hawks rear end. If you guys haven't, go ahead and check out any of the previous build videos of this car. I've done a lot to it, and uh, I go over all the suspension, the coilovers, uh, the rear end, everything. And uh, so here you can see the drain plug, which will probably drain right onto my sway bar. And then up here is the fill plug. So kind of a hard area to reach, that's why I got the pump because just using the bottles isn't really going to work. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove this drain plug and get the fluid removed, which is pretty simple. Obviously it's going to depend on if you have a diff cover with the drain plug or if you have the stamp piece where you actually have to remove the cover in order to drain it, then it's a little bit messier, but this shouldn't be too bad. So the drain is quarter inch Allen and the top is 3 8 Allen, at least for this cover. Yours may vary. So I'm gonna go ahead and crack the top one, take it out, and then remove the drain just so it doesn't gurgle out of here so it flows a little bit smoother. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. I got my drain pan down here. So the fill plug is out. I'm probably going to run a little bit of Teflon on here when I reinstall it. And then I'm going to have to call Hawks in order to get the torque specs on these as well. Looks like this has got a little bit of anti-seize on this one. Oh yeah. She looks good. I mean it smells the way it smelled when I put it in 550 miles ago. I'll take this out and take a closer look at this. But the top one does have a built-in magnet and it didn't have anything on it. And I mean that thing, that looks pristine. So. so here are the plugs. This is the fill plug, drain plug. This is all from the fill plug. And there's a little bit of flakes in here, which this could be a couple things. It might be a little bit from inside the diff. It may be the anti-seize that was on the threads. It could also be uh, the aluminum material from the diff cover to this 
either way, no matter what it is, I'm not worried about that whatsoever. It's very, very minuscule. And then there was nothing on the fill one. Obviously, that's not as common since it's up higher, not as much fluid really touching it. So now that we're at the end of it draining, this is where you're gonna get the good stuff. <laughs> the stuff that smells super good. I mean, diff fluid or gear oil never smells good, but uh, I'll take it over coolant any day. The All the sediment and stuff is going to be at the bottom, so it's gonna be the last or the first stuff to come out just depending on if you just drove it or not. So I just put the cat back in so I can kind of collect this residual. But overall, uh, that's normal. And uh, as long as there's no big chunks or anything like that, we're just gonna go ahead and move forward. I'm just gonna go ahead and let this run out as much as possible. While I was letting the rear end drain to try and get as much of that stuff out as possible, I just went through a nut bolt, checked everything on here lines wires everything looks good there were a couple loose bolts the bolt that sits above the power steering pump right there was the one that actually backed out and was just sitting on top of the power steering pump and then there was one there and above it that were actually loose so i just went through everything and then bolt checked everything and then cleaned it all and everything looks good so fluids are good wires, hoses, nuts, bolts, <laughs> we're good. I'll probably end up doing this, you know, four times a year just to make sure everything's good. But let's go ahead and take a look at the rear. So it looks like it's done pouring. Give it a little wipe. Real quickly before we get the plugs reinstalled, there's a couple different options and depending on what your diff cover, if it's like the stamp steel or the aluminum, uh, there are a few different options. People, some run some run the Teflon tape, some run anises, and then there's also the thread sealant with PTFE that you can run. So there are a few different options. It's all personal preference and uh, kind of depends on how often you're going to be maintenance or keeping up on the maintenance of your rear end, depending on how long these are going to be sitting in there. If it's aluminum, anisees is probably going to be best. If you're worried about leaks, then uh, the, the thread sealant or Teflon tape is probably going to be best. So, Also, as far as torque specs, I found that they usually range from 20 to 35 foot-pounds. I'm going to go on the lower end it's Sunday. Uh, while I'm recording this so Hawks isn't open but I'm gonna go ahead and call them and during editing I will try to put the torque specs for the plugs in the video for you guys so just wanted to throw that in there I have already went ahead I used the thread sealant with PTFE in order to install the drain plug we still have the top one open so we can go ahead and fill the Rear end now. I put the pump in the half court that we have here, and this one does have a dual cap, so it fits smaller and larger bottles. But this is the one that I went with Performance Tool Whiskey 1139, and I'm gonna start with the half court to see how much it actually gets out of the bottle and then depending I might have to crack a new bottle and use a small amount to get the two and a half quarts and also keep in mind depending on the locker that you may have you may require additive so don't forget that if it does require it mine does not require any additive so go ahead and get down there and get this pumped in there so just make sure that the hose stays in there while you pump This makes it so much easier than having to try and finagle a fuel line hose or whatever onto a bottle and then try and get it up in here. So I'm just going to go ahead and get these pumped in. We're going to see how much fluid is left over in the bottom of this quart once I get done pop pumping this one. I have it inserted into the second bottle now, a full bottle, and there's probably about, I don't know, three eighths of an inch left of fluid in there. So basically I'm going to pump these two full bottles in and then pour all of the small amounts left into one bottle and then pump that into the rear end and then I may grab another one and just use a small amount and uh, top it off 
So I'm gonna go ahead and just pump all of these in there and then we'll get it finished up. All right, so I've pumped the two full ones in there. We're back to the one that had half that I put in and now it is back up to right here. So it's almost half full again. And that was what was left over in all three after pumping them in. So after I get done pumping this one in, it'll probably be to about right here, which I may come back with that other one and just top off to make sure that I have two and a half in the rear. Here's the full one and they come about right here full. And so basically what I did was I just pumped down to here out of the new one and then I took what was left over from the three after I pumped as much out of it as possible and then poured it back in here to make sure that it came up to the same spot. That's basically it so I know that I have two and a half quarts in there. We're good to go. Now we can go ahead and get the fill plug put back in. Sorry it's a little hard to hold the camera and do this at the same time but got it all topped off. Now we're just snugging up the fill plug and I'm just going to set these to 20 foot pounds for now. And when I contact Hawks tomorrow, I'll try and get confirmation for you guys. If not, and you're running this rear end, just contact Hawks and they should be able to tell you if for some reason I don't include it in the video. So that's it for the fluid change on the Hawks 8.8. .8. Obviously, it's basically the same process no matter what rear end you have depending on if your diff cover has a fill and drain or if it's just a fill hole. If it doesn't have a drain hole, then you can either use a pump to pump it out from the, the fill hole or you can remove the whole diff cover. You can also, you know, remove the cover, brake clean it out if necessary. Um, I have seen people run brake clean in it with the diff cover on and then just run uh, air compressor through the fill hole and push it all out the drain hole. If you have a bore scope, that's okay because then you can actually see inside and make sure you got everything out, especially all the brake clean. I'm not that worried about it. It's brand new. It's got just over 500 miles on it. I'm not going to remove the diff cover. Everything looked really good. So it's a really simple process. Just make sure that you get the correct amount of fluid in. And uh, yeah, the pump is a huge help over doing it by hand with just a hose or something like that. So if you guys enjoyed, please make sure to smash that thumbs up. Leave a comment down below of your guys' thoughts. And as always, if you guys haven't subscribed, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.